check out my snazzy wheel trims. If anyone asks, it's a base model with steel wheels on it. Definitely not drag radials. Honest. I much prefer it like this because it actually looks... Well, I think it looks bad, but most people think it looks worse. But... That's what I want. I want it to look like shit. Just going around the block and um, just testing to see if it was going to rub and it doesn't seem to. Right, so it survived a 50, probably 50 odd mile journey without the arches chewing up the tyres or anything. They're all good. Nothing exploded or overheated or went wrong. So yeah, no silencer is fucking loud. Does sound good though. Uh, this, amazingly, basically a bullet silencer, like instead of drag cars in America, I've had this for years, makes an amazing amount of difference. <laughs> and even these um, 100 cell race cats do. All I'm trying to do is work out what I want to do with the exhaust so it's more MOT friendly because everyone seems to be uh, a bit funny about having a cat on for an MOT these days. Um, I don't know whether to just make a, because obviously that is four inch, so I can just make a removable thing so I can run that normally and maybe this for MOT time or maybe even permanently put one on the tailpipe just a bit of a lack of room then don't actually know well for MOT time and um, maybe other times I made this it basically is a straight swap for my normal one because it's a V-band there and that is basically the bullet silencer and then the two race cats including that one as a tailpipe obviously I'm, gonna, I'm making hangers for it now but just showing you before I do that I still got a before I weld the hangers on I need to work out exactly what angle it is to clear the exhaust it's about that but I need to double check um, so yeah I'll be very interested to see if these are any restriction as well. What I might do is at some point, probably not straight away, is add a bung to the downpipe bit so I can take a pressure reading off that. I mean, I can use a map sensor and uh, get the, you know, get the Ignitron to data log it easy enough. And I, I'd be interested to test, like, on a full blast, like, third or fourth gear or whatever run to the limiter 
the difference in back pressure, if there is any, between this and this. That isn't quite straight through because of the two race cats, but it's still like six inch body, 100 cell, not exactly small. And obviously this, which is straight through giant silencer. But let's start this fucker up, see how loud it is. new MOT friendly exhaust made so two cats tailpipe one and one before it and a silencer but a bullet one so it's not doing that much <laughs> I'm gonna wrap it next I don't know whether I want the tailpipe silver or black I was thinking black at first just to make it more hidden but to be honest since the car silver I think a silver tailpipe's probably just as hidden so uh yeah, i'll fucking probably leave it saves me buying any black high temp paint as well i ain't got any left um so yeah i don't think i've got any wrap here either i don't know i'm gonna go upstairs and see if i got any wrap i certainly haven't got any metal cable ties but um to be honest jubilees kind of work better turns out i had absolutely shit loads of wrap upstairs i've still got plenty left God knows why, but I just wrapped this shit out of this and um, yeah, all done. That's the breather setup done. Much better now. One each side, 19 mil all the way. Filter either side. Also very high up, so minimizing the chance of oil actually getting in there. Still will under some pressure, but the pressure's unlikely to be anywhere near as much anymore because, well, the breathing's bad. So yeah, pretty fucking pleased with that. Neat, easy to work on. In a serious case of do as I say, not as I do, I've made a turbo oil return, a new one, out of, well, a pipe I would normally say don't use on a whole set because it's a bit too small. Generally, I, I swear by the use 19 mil minimum internal diameter for the oil drain. This isn't, I don't know what it is. It's basically the standard oil drain with a bit on the end because I tried to repair the original one, which was leaking. Well, I've always had this leaking problem and I was just fucking chasing my tail. It was just constantly, um, it, I don't know, I think the metal was just fucked. At the beginning, it was one tiny pinhole leak, and every time I fixed anything, it just found something new. I don't even fucking know why. It was just impossible. You know, you, none of them were, like, really visible, but they were enough to uh, fuck it up. So I found a standard oil return and realized it actually goes to almost the right place. Because that's normally where the turbo is. It just needed an extension because the top mount. It sat in almost the right place. So fuck it. I'm doing one out of this. And maybe it's not quite enough. But to be honest, the worst thing that happened would be the turbo would smoke a bit. You know, I don't give a fuck. It's, you know, that's, people care about things like that. And that's why they cry. It don't actually break the turbo. And um, I really could care. About just saying I like my exhaust is outside because obviously echoing in the workshop makes it sound way louder than it is. And it is loud but it's not actually that bad. I mean according to this decibel meter. And I mean I'm what? Ten foot away? Loud exhaust, but 
So, hubcaps, cat stickers, National Trust sticker, AA badge. Yeah, looking as shit as I can possibly make it. Even more changes. I think I've changed the previous system about 10 times now, but it's now at its ideal version. So I've got 90 mil hose from both, so as free flowing as possible, all the way to the outlet. I've mounted these better because the Chinese clamps were just shite, so I had to modify them and make my own. And rather than breathing off a filter there, which I was never totally happy with because A, should it explode and piss oil everywhere it's kind of over the wheels and b it just looks like shit especially in this cold ass country where you get loads of condensation steaming away especially when it's cold so i vented it down both sides to behind the rear wheels so perfect i kind of i was just going to leave it as it was but this morning I just happened to be shown by YouTube some video about um, Aussie V8 supercar, you know, their touring cars basically, catching fire. And the the reasoning the, the bloke was kind of thinking, he was showing the engine bay and the catch tank setup and all that. He reckoned because of, you know, the breathing like any uh, hard used engine will, and where the filter was on top of the catch tank there, you know, little bits was coming out. And because the engines are fucking red hot, they were catching fire and setting fire to things. It weren't major fires from what I could tell, but it was like bad enough, you know, potentially major fires. And although I wouldn't have that same problem, I was still a bit shit. And basically his, their solution for the interim was simply to get rid of the filter. They had like a normal k and filter type thing like I had on here and run it to the ground, which is exactly what I've done. I mean, to be fair, back in the day before cars had to have um, closed loop breather systems that go back into the intake from the factory, all cars had some form of catch tank and whatever, and they all breathed straight to the ground. In America, where the rules are a bit different, if I remember right, like Dodge Rams and whatever, the Cummins engines had that with the pipe going to the ground long, long after, you know, we've seen it. I mean, 99% of this world don't even remember cars having that from the factory these days because it's been around, you know, been the law to not have that for so long. But um, if you look at like old, old cars, I remember seeing like, I think it's Jaggy types and stuff like that. Had like a catch tank on the bulkhead and then it pissed out to the floor and i think they also had like a separate filter on the bulkhead if i remember right i can't it was a while ago when i last saw one and yeah dodge rams had the pipe to the floor by the side of the block until amazingly recently i don't know how recent but more recent than we've ever seen them on normal cars in this country for sure but yeah sorted now so that is perfect um, and yeah, I much prefer the tailpipes in black. Well, the race cat and the screamer pipe. I, I don't like sort of uh, look at me type shit. So just added a load of toe in to the rear because the car's always felt, well, with this new setup, it's always felt a bit sketchy at speed. Literally by eye. Just max them out the standard adjusters. I've got the adjustable arms, but they're the, both the correct length. And to me, the standard adjusters maxed out is enough, if not too much. So, looks good too. Makes the wheels look fucking even more badass. So, <laughs> next job's to go for a drive and see if it feels more stable. Because, yeah, like third, fourth gear onwards. Uh, you know, under heavy load, normal driving's fine, feels normal, but under heavy load, felt fucking wayward, and that ain't good. Can't do much uh, timing at the moment, because, well, it's too busy. But I had a little go, 
on a sub 360 to 100 now, which is fucking fast. And this is with two cats and a full tank of fuel. Not exactly peak condition for uh, faster speed, but sub 3, 60 to 100 is uh, fucking moving. I don't know why you can see this. It's my friend's uh, been making a list of his various friends' cars while they've been timing them. And yeah, I'm like second place now to, uh, I think it's like a thousand odd horsepower Nissan GTR. But like, yeah, I mean, K24 turbo, um, BMW paddle shift, fancy fucking eight speed box, MX-5. Even that's half a second slower. So yeah, it's, um, it's quick. Very fucking quick. Sorry I didn't film any of this, but to be honest, I wasn't expecting decent times really because, well, full tank of fuel, two cats fitted, blah, blah, blah. But, and it's also pretty busy out there, so I didn't think I'd have a chance to do anything, but... I had one go at 100 to 200 kilometers because people keep asking. Seems like a stupid thing to me. And 6.0, which is fucking fast for what it is. But there's nowhere near what it could do. I mean, even look at the graph. Look how shit the gear change was and the complete lack of acceleration down at 100 where I, well, I clearly put my foot down way too late. I didn't, I wasn't even paying attention. I should have, uh, I've brake boosted it or put my foot down earlier because that's kind of, you know, I don't know how long that is in seconds, but it's uh, a fair way of not actually going anywhere. So, <laughs> yeah, but 6 0 with that shit gear change and shit start, I reckon, you know, and obviously. Two cats and a full tank of fuel, which is, you know, a lot on a heavy, a lot on a pretty light car like this. I reckon it's got to be mid fives with a bit of practice. But yeah, fast. On the way back from my little test drive earlier, when I did the 60 to 100 and 100 to 200 run, um, I heard a noise. It sounded like. Um, scratching like a well like a stone in the caliper normally or if your pads are knackered you know rubbing like caliper sticking that kind of thing but because the calipers were almost new and the pads were almost new at the same time just standard but I put new ones on a while ago a little, little while ago <clears throat> thought oh it must be just a, a stone stuck in the disc didn't think nothing of it um, I was wrong. Spot the difference. This is one side. Lots of meat, pretty even. Basically fine, because they're almost new, like I said. This is this side. This is the inner, where the piston would be rubbing on it. Normal amount of wear, but bizarrely, it's bent. Like the actual backing has been bent. And the other side doesn't exist. It's completely fucking gone. Never really seen anything like it when the you know the wheels are still moving, but it's um, the slider must have been stuck. It must have just been. Well, it come out easy enough, so I didn't think it was stuck, but it must have been. Because one side's perfect and you know the side with the piston on is perfect so I would probably say the pistons working fine but the slider me thinks is stuck so yeah I just stripped them all down to be honest it looks fine so it's not gonna I'm not gonna change the calipers because they're almost fucking new anyway I'm not gonna change the calipers I'm just gonna grease them up and um, fit new discs and pads, which are coming in a couple of days, I've already ordered them, and it should be fine. That's a bit annoying though, because I, you know, I wanted to uh, 
do a bit more testing later but now I've got a couple of days wait because it's at one of four rear pads while out to give you some action in this video unfortunately caliper dying has uh, killed that idea and if I wait even more yeah, I mean it's been <coughs> and it's been over a week already since the last video so I don't want to wait any longer to post this so I'm going to post this up because obviously still loads of progress I've timed it and it's ridiculously fast blah 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 just going to have to wait for the next video for some actual filmed action because uh, calipers fucked well wow. to be honest I don't think it is I think well I just messaged Thomas he's not here today and I said I'm pretty and I actually asked next door which is like a normal MLT garage so they've got experience of shitty sticking calipers and shit and yeah everybody agreed with me that it's got to be the slider sticking and Thomas said check if there's too much well check if there's a lot of play too much play between you know in the actual slider part thing is I don't know what fucking too much play is because I've never you know I'm used to fucking proper calipers not crappy single pot things so I don't really you know not got a lot of experience of that but I checked it versus the other side and they both got play, which I'll have to have, otherwise they wouldn't slide. This one's definitely got more, but what's too much, I honestly don't fucking know. I've not got enough experience with single pot calipers to know. But in all honesty, because it looks okay, and it's not a ridiculous amount of play, I reckon I'm gonna just stuff it full of uh, grease and everything, and pull it all back together with the new discs and pads when they turn up. And I think it'd be fine. I mean, if it's not and it happens again, then I'll have to change the caliper, but I'm pretty sure it'd be okay. Because, yeah, I think that just got stuck, which is because of too much play rather than rust. It, as in, as Thomas said, yeah, too much play and they can end up going at an angle and that's how they would stick, which makes sense because it wasn't rusted solid. So I'm fairly sure that's what it is, but I reckon just greasing up the slider so it's, you know, pretty full in there with grease and shit would probably solve it. But yeah, overall, fucking good. Even that single run, which is obviously nowhere near best it can be because it's got a full tank and blah, blah, blah. Still fucking rapid. I reckon I can get at least another half second off that hundred to two hundred time just with some practice fucking out wow between practice um caliper not binding up massively um not having a full tank of fuel i don't even know if this exhaust is a restriction or not it might be compared to the uh straight through silencer one it probably is and so on i've got to take half a second off that i mean Potentially more, but I don't want to fucking say more. Don't get me wrong. Now I've uh, played with the toe angles and it's now really stable. This car could easily have another hundred brake and you could still drive it fine. So <laughs> I might have more before too long. But um, yeah, I reckon I reckon five and a half should be... Uh, very achievable very soon and fuck you know low fives ultimately I'd like to get in the fours but considering this whole car cost me well so far as it is you know ignoring the first engine just saying like we did it from the start with this engine um, rather than the standard one originally I honestly think this entire car owes me about £6,000. £6,000 for legit supercar acceleration. Hard to beat that, innit? Okay, actually, it's fucking impossible to beat that, really. So, yeah, good times. Anyway, hope you liked this video. Informative, if not exciting. But stay tuned, because there'll be a hell of a lot more. 
So like, comment, subscribe, blah, blah, blah. And I'll see you next time. Tell it.